Hello and welcome to the inside of a car. This is one of the biggest head-to-head -head comparisons we have ever conducted. Five of South Africa's most affordable cars going head-to-head -head in a budget car bonanza. Stay tuned because we are going to tell you the best way to spend your hard-earned rands. Right, let's start off in this, the Datsun Go Mid. Now, when this car came out, it made headlines for all the wrong reasons. It had virtually no safety features and Nissan and Datsun have made some steps to change that. So now we've got two airbags in here, one for driver, one for passenger and ABS braking, which is super important. Only one of the cars here today doesn't have ABS and that is the Kia Picanto. This Datsun Go Mid is the entry-level car in the range at 149,600. It's the second cheapest car here, but for an extra 300 Rand, you get a Renault Quid. So there's not much between them when it comes to price. However, one of the shining attributes of this Datsun Go is that you will get a massive six-year 150,000 kilometer warranty. That is the best warranty of all the cars here. And that means if you plan to keep your Datsun Go for a really long time, you've got great cover for the next six years. There's only two variants to choose from in the Datsun Go range. There's the Mid and the Lux. You have to spend about an extra 16,000 Rand to get the Lux. And to be honest, I'm not sure it's entirely worth it. If you can live with steel wheels and not having steering wheel controls, for instance, then for under 150 grand, I think the Datsun Go is now pretty good value. So let's judge this car on its merits and we'll start off with the engine. You can only choose from one engine in the range. It's a 1.2 three cylinder. There's no turbocharger. You get 50 kilowatts and 104 Newton meters. And that is pretty much bang on with the rest of the cars here today. Slightly less power than the Mahindra, but a bit more torque than the rest of them. And it's a little bit of a noisy engine, but nothing too bad, nothing too remarkable for me to comment on. And as a test team, we're averaging 6.4 to the 100 in this car, which is pretty decent. Of course, the biggest effect on your fuel consumption is the way you drive. So keep that in mind, drive economically and you will save money. This is the cabin of the Datsun Go Mid. Now, the most obvious thing that I think is missing is the steering wheel controls. Other than that, it's pretty pretty well specced in here. I mean, I've got electric windows all around and electric mirrors. And when you consider that the Celerio, which is a cheaper car, doesn't have any of that, that is quite a nice touch. Over here on the dash, you get this sort of fake carbon fiber finish. I don't think that's necessary. This is not really a McLaren, but you do get aircon as standard. And of course, dominating the dash is this touchscreen, which you get in this cheaper model of the Go. You of course also get it in the Lux. And this is really cool, makes the car feel more modern and it is more modern. It's got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. If you haven't used those two pieces of technology yet, you really must try it. You just plug in your phone, make sure you've got the apps and it will work. But if you don't want to use those two pieces of technology, you've got Bluetooth to connect your phone for your music and your calls as well. But there are some weird, weird touches in here. Like I got in the car and I thought the crew put this microphone here for me to talk to, but they didn't. This is part of the car and it's just sort of hanging here. And I think it used to be stuck over here, but it's not stuck anymore. It's fallen. It looks pretty terrible actually. And then guess where the aux and the USB port is, right? Not anywhere here. It's actually in here. And you sort of pull out this like foam snake and that's your aux and your USB port. Why is it there? Why did they just drill a hole somewhere, just wire it through and put it there? That's one of the funniest things I've seen on a car. <laughs> Sorry to laugh. <sighs> Welcome to the Suzuki Solerio. Now, contrary to my initial opinion on the name of this car, it is not named after celery. I actually learned a new word, celerity, which means swiftness of movement. And that's probably where this car got its name from. And ironically, swiftness of movement is not really one of this car's strong points, but this isn't a performance car shootout. We can't judge it too harshly on that. Consumer review, budget car. 
think, Chip. Think. It's got about the same power at 50 kilowatts as the other cars, but it's got 10 to 20 percent less torque. Now, torque is important. It's the aspect of the engine which you're really going to feel, for instance, when you're fully loaded and trying to get up a hill, or if you're just trying to get up a hill. But I don't see this engine being a problem in day-to-day -day traffic. It's not that bad. And of course, the benefits to a small engine or a light car is fuel consumption. And I wish I could tell you what this car is averaging. Um, oh, I just found it. <laughs> what an idiot. Um, we're averaging 18.5 kilometers per liter. So, damn it, I wish I'd done this calculation before I started driving. Give me a minute. Okay, I'm gonna pull over, pull over. Give me a second. 5.4. Wow, that's really good. 5.4 liters to 100. Okay. Let's get into the pricing of the Suzuki Celerio. Now this 1.0 GA is the cheapest model. There are two models above it, including an automatic gearbox. And for 139,900, it is the second cheapest car in our comparison test. But those honors of cheapest go to the Mahindra, but only 2,000 Rand. So really, there's not much in it, especially if you're financing the car. But compared to the rest of the competition, it is about 15,000 Rand cheaper. And that's a decent saving. This is the interior of the Suzuki Celerio. And right off the bat, let me say, this is not my favorite interior. I mean, let's start with the most immediate negative, and that's the fact that you've got this pretty ugly aftermarket radio sitting here in the dash. It doesn't look like it fits properly. And sure, you could go off and buy yourself amazing radio. You could get one of those fancy aftermarket touchscreen ones because it does have the double space, but it's just never going to look as good as a car which comes standard with a built-in infotainment system. But let's talk about some positives. Uh, two airbags, ABS, that's very good. The air in here is great. Jeez, it's like Arctic. It really is good. But back to the negatives. Windy windows. Yeah, windy, windy, windy. When was the last time you did that? Manual mirrors as well. So you have to reach across over there and try and fix it if you need to, which is a bit of a faff. And oh, I don't like this pattern on the seats. Why do car companies do this? It looks like the curtains in a city lodge in the 90s. But overall, if you want a couple more toys, you know, spend a bit more, go for the model above this, you'll get steering wheel controls and a fitted radio. But this does feel like the cheapest car here. There's no real way around it. Right, and into the Kia Picanto we go. Let's get the price out of the way. 154,995 Rand, which makes it the most expensive car here today. And let's get some more technicalities out of the way. We don't have the correct engine here today. We don't have the one liter. This is the 1.2, so a bit more powerful. Kia South Africa, unfortunately, couldn't supply us with a one liter. So that means I'm not gonna compare this engine to the other cars today and I'm not gonna make a pronouncement on fuel consumption. On paper, however, Kia claims five liters to the 100, which is really good, and it means that it sits between the quid in terms of consumption and the Datsun Go. The other great thing about this Kia is you get a really good warranty, five years unlimited kilometers. So that's very nice. The service plan is optional to two year 45,000 K service plan. You're gonna to have to bolt that on if you'd like it. Right, with all that boring on paper stuff out of the way, this is, by far and away, the car that I would live with every day. It is great to drive. This is a really cracking little car. In terms of ride quality, I'm really impressed. In terms of the amount of road noise, wind noise, making it through to the cabin, I'm really impressed. I can barely hear the engine. That's very impressive as well. This is a good little car. really is very nice in here inside the Kia Picanto. It feels more upmarket and that's kind of because it is. This is a car which is designed to be sold at a higher price point and then they pull some spec out of it to bring the price down into the segment. And there are some things missing. Let's, you know, let's be honest here. I would like some electric windows and the mirrors are manual. But other than that, look at this dash. The quality of the materials, the build quality, the fact that the radio is designed and fitted by the manufacturer and not some afterthought. I mean, look at the position of the USB port and the AUX jack. You know, sensible, where you can see it and reach it, not in some 
foamy tapeworm in the cubby hole. This is a good interior. Multifunction steering wheel as well. That's standard. You don't get that on any of the other cars, which is great. I can kind of live with this pattern on the seats. Eh, it's not too bad. Don't know why the seats can't just be black, but anyway. But yeah, overall, this is the best interior of any of the cars here. And it is the interior that I'd be happy to look at every day and interact with. It's got Bluetooth. Right, the boots or the trunks or the load area, depending on what country you're in. This is very important. You're going to be using these cars on a daily basis and you need a practical load area. So come in a bit closer. Let's take a quick look at them, starting off with the Mahindra. I'm point out a few quirks and differences between the cars. And the one that sticks out on the Mahindra the most is how high this boot lid is compared to the boot floor. So if you've got something heavy in there, it's gonna be pretty difficult to yank it up and over this boot lid. So keep that in mind. Also, this is a solid rear bench. It doesn't split. Moving on to the Datsun Go. This is quite possibly the biggest boot here, which is great, but it comes with this really poor aftermarket parcel shelf and some of the detailing on here, the rubbers and stuff, they're already coming off. It looks really tatty, but you do get a very nice boot carpet though which is good. Moving on to the Quid. Now for the most compact car here, the one with the least cabin space, it actually possibly has the largest boot. And a lot of it is down to the boot floor being all the way down there and the parcel shelf being all the way up here. Now one of the things that annoys me is this doesn't stay up at all. And the boot floor looks really cheap. It's pretty much just cardboard. Onto the Solerio, a bit smaller than the Quids. You can see that straight away, but it does have this really innovative feature of the parcel shelf staying out of your way when you're trying to load things. Imagine that. And finally, we have the Kia Picanto. And it looks like the tiniest boot here. That's kind of because it is, but it has a trick up its sleeve. If you pull away this quite nice carpet and you pull that tab, it's a false floor. And that means you've got much more depth and you can actually get a cooler box in there, which is pretty decent. The other thing that this car has going for it that none of the other cars do is that the seats fold in a 60-40 split. But annoyingly, there's nowhere to put this thing. So you have to choose, do you want it in or out? And if you want it out, you have to leave it at home. And into the Renault Quid we go. This is my least favorite car here. Might as well just tell you that up front. If you're looking for the most affordable new car in South Africa, at the time that we filmed this, it is the Renault Quid Expression, which costs 10,000 Rand less than this car, just under 135,000. But this Dynamic model comes in at just under 145,000 Rand, and that gives you a couple of extra features inside and outside of the car. But let's start with the basics. So there's a one liter, three cylinder motor under the hood, and it's a pretty, noisy motor and it's a little bit gutless in terms of its performance but not the end of the world i think i could live with the motor uh, we do have abs in here we only have one airbag let's keep that in mind only one airbag for the driver and to be fair where this car really shines is fuel economy so on the readouts in front of me it says 18.6 kilometers per liter which translates to 5.3 liters to the 100 in real world driving that is very impressive that's going to save you a lot of money at the pumps makes us probably one of the most efficient petrol cars in South Africa. So it really does have that going for it. And you'll be happy to live with that, I imagine. However, you will have to live with a car which dynamically is not great. And I'm not sure I can really point out why this car doesn't feel as good as all the other cars in the segment, especially because it's built on pretty much the same platform as the Datsun Go. It just doesn't feel good. And in terms of cabin space, it's pretty cramped in here. I mean, every time I go for a gear change, I touch the cameraman's leg. It's, it's getting a bit awkward. For the purposes of clarity, I am now sitting inside the Renault Quid. Now, this isn't the worst interior here. I think those honors go to the Solerio. I don't mind the materials in here so much, actually. The plastic's pretty decent. This is not the best piano black I've ever seen, but it doesn't look 
too bad. Interior features include electric windows, which you operate over here, but that's only for the front. The rear is windy. You do get aircon. You don't get multifunction steering wheel controls, unfortunately, but what they have done is moved the USB port and the aux jack to a more sensible position because it used to be embedded in the touchscreen. And when you plugged in a cable to charge your phone, it just looked a bit ropey. You do get this touchscreen as standard though, which is a really nice touch. It's got a very high resolution display. It looks pretty. There's no Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, but it is a good way to run your media, for instance, Bluetooth streaming and Bluetooth calls as well. In terms of things that are missing, I did say it has ABS, which it still has, but like the Kia, it only has one airbag. So over here is a cubby hole where your other airbag should go. So, you know, if you, if you only ever drive alone, that's fine, I suppose. And I should tell you about the warranty. It's one of the better ones here. Five year, 150,000 Ks. Okay, I'm done. Been a lot of cars today. But this, to give it its official name, is the KUV, KU, Okay, hang on. Okay, it's the Mahindra KUV100 NXT 1.2 G80 K2 Plus. Right, let's get on with the video. <clears throat> For 137,900 Rand, this is the most affordable car we have here today. And the cool thing is, it doesn't feel like it. It really doesn't. This feels like a solid car. This feels like a substantial bit of kit. I, I mean, I, I don't know what's happening in here. Talk about that in a bit. But out here on the road, I quite like this. It's unexpectedly nice to drive. This is good. I'm impressed. Engine's a little noisy, so it's a 1.2 litre three-cylinder, but it does have the most power and torque of any of the cars here. In fact, it's got 20% more power and torque than the rest of them. This is a bit of a heavier car though, but other than that, I'd be pretty happy to drive this car every day. And I think that if you do a lot of gravel roads, then this car makes a lot of sense. You've got that extra ride height, extra clearance over bumps and rocks and that sort of thing. And it does have a very solid suspension set up to it. It feels like it can handle the rough stuff. So I would say that after the Picanto, this car offers the best ride quality. Yeah, look at that. Go Mahindra. What is going on here? Seriously, what, what is this? This is one of the weirdest looking interiors I think I've ever come across. I mean, this is super quirky. Your gear shifter up on the dashboard and you really don't have to guess what car I'm talking about here because it has a massive chrome badge on the dashboard. I assume in case you've forgotten what car you've bought. It also has the same aftermarket radio problem as the Solerio. Some other things missing are electric windows. You don't get those. The mirrors are manual as well. Overall, definitely doesn't feel like the cheapest interior. And this is the largest cabin. It does feel like a roomy cabin. And I really like that about it. Two airbags in here, ABS as well. And you get this lovely, genuine, fake carbon fiber. That's really nice. Feels great to touch. The seats are actually some of the more comfortable ones in this budget car comparison that we've been doing. And it's the only one which is height adjustable. And I think we should also talk about the warranty because it is a split warranty. So it is a five year, but for the first three years, it's comprehensive. And for the last two years, it only relates to the powertrain. So for instance, if you have a problem with the air conditioning, that doesn't count as part of the warranty. So that's important to read the fine print on that one. And let me end things off by talking about this handbrake, which is one of the most comical elements I've seen on a car in a really long time. So myself and Ashley, both our fathers had Isuzu Buckies in the 80s as workhorses, and they had the exact same handbrake mechanism as this Mahindra. Wow. <laughs> okay, moving on.
We have come to the end of our five-car budget Bonanza shootout head-to-head -head comparison. These are five of the cheapest cars in South Africa, and they are very important in that respect. And the winner is the Kia Picanto, except it isn't. Unfortunately, we've had to rule it out due to missing safety features. It doesn't have ABS in this trim and it only has one airbag. And we don't think that you can put a car on sale in South Africa in 2019 without ABS. And it also rules it out of our Cars of Coza Consumer Awards powered by Westbank. And so this is a competition between the rest of them. What is the best of the rest? And in terms of value for money, we think it's pretty much a tie between the Mahindra and the Suzuki. But thanks to our ownership satisfaction survey, which thousands of you have kindly filled in for us, you've told us which are the best brands to own in South Africa. And of that group here, the winner is Suzuki. They've been our brand of the year twice now in the Cars of Coza Consumer Awards. And you've also told us that they're extremely reliable. So we think we can recommend the Suzuki for a great ownership experience. And there we go, there we have it. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you very much for watching. Remember that a full written review of all of these cars and the comparison will be up on our site as soon as one of my colleagues writes it. Bye for now. And just one more word on our winner. While the model tested here is the 1 litre GA, the much better spec 1 litre GL costs around 16,000 Rand more and still comes in at slightly less than the Kia Picanto 1 litre start that we featured in this video. The Solerio 1 litre GL is the one we'd have, but at 139,900 Rand, the 1 litre GA remains very good value. We hope you enjoyed our massive budget car showdown and we really hope you found all the information useful. For more information on our Cars.coza Consumer Awards, head to www.carsawards.co.za or click on the link which has just popped up on your screen. Thanks for watching. Cars.coza is so much more than just a YouTube channel. Take our app for instance, it's been downloaded over 500,000 times in the Android store alone which means it must be okay, right? You'll find the links to the download for iOS and Android in the description below.